Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss yet another potential resolution to that famous cosmological crisis referred to as the Hubble Tension. The unusual and unexplained discrepancy between measurements when it comes to the expansion of the universe. And in this case we're going to discuss a relatively new study that tries to find even more evidence for a somewhat intriguing proposition from a few years back. The proposition that maybe just maybe the Milky Way galaxy is actually inside a giant galactic void, which causes a lot of our measurements to be just a little bit different. And so today we're going to delve into this fascinating area of modern cosmology that tries to prove that the Milky Way might be residing in a cosmic emptiness of a giant void in space. And so let's break down this idea into smaller chunks, discuss what the evidence shows us as well, and discuss why this particular proposition may be important for understanding the cosmos. But first, we obviously need to understand the problem itself. The problem of the Hubble tension. I mean, that's in case you've never heard of this before. And in simpler terms, the Hubble tension refers to a persistent and significant discrepancy in how we measure the rate at which the universe is expanding. The rate referred to as the Hubble constant, in this case represented by this bread filled with raisins. And over the years, a lot of different observations and a lot of different measurements have been done, usually involving different methods. And while the tension itself forms as a result of some of these measurements just not matching up. And specifically when it comes to the early universe versus the universe much closer to us. When we look at the early universe, especially through the cosmic microwave background, and also something known as the baryon acoustic oscillations that we'll discuss in a few seconds, the Hubble constant is measured to be 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec, or basically for every 3.26 million light years, the universe accelerates by 67 kilometers per second. But when we measure this much closer to us, in much older universe or using local measurements, usually using Cepheid variable stars or type 1a supernova, here the measurement becomes 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. And though this difference of 8% may not sound like a lot, in this case this presents a huge problem for cosmologists. As a matter of fact, it's referred to as the most exciting crisis in cosmology because it actually challenges the model of the universe known as the Lambda Cold Dark Matter or Lambda CDM. And so what's happening with our raisin bread? And I guess more importantly, how could a local void resolve this? Well first, what exactly is a cosmic void? And well, it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's a region of space that's much lower in density and significantly emptier in matter than the rest of the universe. In some way you can actually imagine this as one of these empty spots between the much denser regions we usually refer to as the cosmic web. And quite a few voids are known to us, with I guess the most famous one being the Buddha's void, but the more important one is of course the local void. The void that seems to be located very close to the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, for many years it was actually implied that the Milky Way galaxy seems to be right at the edge of this void, which might cause certain problems when it comes to observations from super far away. And that's because here it might create a bit of an observational bias. But the local void is much smaller than what we're actually discussing today. Here we also know that the Milky Way seems to reside inside what's known as KBC void, also known as the local hole, or an extremely large region of space that spans approximately 2 billion light years and contains a lot of the galaxies familiar to us. If you were to somehow try to imagine this void, it would maybe resemble something like this. Here you have a bunch of tendrils from the cosmic web surrounding a much emptier spot. And though this void has been proposed and there is a lot of evidence that it potentially exists, it's not 100% certain yet. But it is estimated to be extremely large, potentially one of the largest out there, and overall seems to contain about 20% less matter than the average volume of space. And so here the idea is that maybe we are inside of this void, and possibly even in the center of this void, which kind of represents this empty bubble with a lot less density. And because gravity acts as a kind of a pool inside of this void, matter is pulled toward higher density regions outside of the void, which does create an outflow of matter from the void's center toward its edges which is kind of demonstrated in this image right here. And so here, because a lot of the galaxies and a lot of the stuff in general is pulled toward the edges, when we start making observations, it creates just a bit of a bias. 
And so, for example, when we observe distant galaxies, the light from these galaxies travels through this void, and because of the outflow of matter, objects away from us appear to move much faster than they would in perfectly uniform universe. And so it's this faster apparent motion that makes it seem like the local expansion rate is much higher than it truly is, increasing it by approximately 8%. And that's essentially the proposition from a few years back, with this new study by Indra Nilbanik trying to provide a little bit more evidence. And so here, by being inside the void, there should be a kind of a small contribution from gravitational redshift created by the void. And it's also something we should be able to prove by observing certain objects really far away. And specifically by observing certain well-known phenomena known as BAO, baryon acoustic oscillations. And though there are some videos in the description that discuss the idea behind BAO a little bit better, in a nutshell, BAO are some of the largest structures in the entire universe. And they're basically like these ancient bubbles. And to be more exact, Acoustic bubbles formed when the universe was extremely hot, extremely dense, and basically only contained plasma, which with time formed these enormous bubbles inside of it, and as the universe cooled down, a lot of these pressure waves formed a kind of a scaffold for a lot of galactic structures, with many of these pressure waves growing in size as a result of the expansion of the universe, and now forming these enormous bubbles all over the place that can actually be used to study the universe and its expansion. And specifically here we can also use this to study distances and to then understand how the universe evolved. And so by themselves, baryon acoustic oscillations are a really important standard ruler in cosmology. And we know that these bubbles or these ripples are definitely there, as a lot of different surveys discovered them over the years. And so these vast spherical arrangements of cosmic structures sort of represent these ancient fossils from the beginning of the universe. In some sense, you can actually think of it as fossilized sound waves, because technically this represents ancient sound of the universe. But the reason they're so important is because of their size. They have a standard size of approximately 1 billion light years in diameter. And so because we know their size, they can easily serve as a kind of a cosmic tape measure in helping us figure out distances and in helping us figure out how fast the universe is expanding. And so that was the focus of the recent study. Bannock and his colleague used these bow fossilized sounds to try to investigate the local void possibility with their calculations predicting that if the local void does exist, or basically if the Milky Way is indeed inside a massive local void, it might distort these bow measurements in a very specific way and these distortions should become greater at certain distances. But then by examining approximately 20 years of observations of various bow from a lot of different surveys, and by focusing on angular scale, wretch of depth, something known as AP parameter, and isotopically average distances, researchers discovered that if the void was real, it would dramatically reduce the tension itself, making the universe suddenly make a lot of sense. Or just to rephrase this, if there was no void and the Milky Way was basically inside some kind of a cosmic web, the Hubble tension persisted, but the bowel measurements did not really make a lot of sense. However, if the Milky Way galaxy was indeed inside this massive 2 billion light years across the void, this would actually reduce the tension dramatically, and the measurements of baryon acoustic oscillations suddenly made a lot of sense. And the difference here was dramatic. The void models were 100,000 times more likely to fit the observed bow data. So it was 100,000 times more likely to be correct. And this was especially true for one of the largest surveys to date, the survey known as DASI, Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument. And, well, this is definitely a really intriguing discovery. A discovery that's crucial because it offers physical evidence that potentially explains why the Hubble tension seems to exist without breaking any rules of physics and without presenting something that doesn't make sense. And though some of the ideas today suggest that, well, maybe this is actually the result of dark energy changing over time and potentially disappearing for some reason or another, or basically that dark energy seems to have unusual nature, and by the way, we still have no idea what this dark energy even is, here these additional models still require a lot of exotic explanations, provide explanations that are not really specific, and actually create new problems for cosmology. And on top of this, they also don't really easily account for other cosmic anomalies, like for example the fast galaxy motions known as bulk flows, something that these voids would usually produce. And so here this particular hypothesis provides us with a coherent explanation for various cosmic anomalies. 
First of all, obviously, it resolves the Hubble tension. In this case, it's just a bias based on a slightly higher local expansion, just because we're in a very weird location in a much lower density region. It's also consistent with various observations of the KBC void, and of course the observations of baryon acoustic oscillations. And it's really this BAO data that seems to remarkably match the predictions, something that previous models cannot explain. And because in this case nothing major is broken and no physics need to be changed, this is actually a really exciting explanation. An explanation that kind of aligns with the observed redshifts and all the data coming out of different surveys. But obviously this is just a hypothesis for now. I mean it's been over five years now, and at the moment though this is a promising explanation, it still has not been widely accepted. And mostly because the KBC void is still a hypothetical structure and we're not 100% certain it exists, especially because its existence might create a problem for cosmology by itself. And that's because it's a little bit too large. And on top of this, there's been some counter arguments with additional calculations suggesting that some of these initial observations were incorrect, some of which we have discussed in some of the previous videos in the description. And so the rigorous testing is definitely still required. But these findings strongly suggest that the solution to the Hubble tension may not be really in exotic new physics, but rather in a much simpler, more localized explanation, basically involving our galaxy floating inside this enormous void. Something that we know exists all over the place, and something that would make quite a lot of sense. And this is a compelling possibility that continues to shape our understanding of the universe's grand structure, and helps us understand how the universe evolved over billions of years, and of course how all of this is going to end. And that's something we're going to be discussing in some of the future videos coming out really soon. And so on that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon where you can find additional videos, videos without any ads, and can DM me directly, or by joining the channel membership where you get early access, a few more additional videos and some other stuff. Or maybe support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt. Thank you for watching, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.